Welcome to TransLogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. Superbike technology over the last few decades has jumped ahead in leaps and bounds with incredible offerings from both Japan and Europe. But could the next potential game changer not only be electric, but come from a place that was least expected, the United States. And that's why we're here with the Mission RS to see what she's made of. Riding any kind of motorcycle in Northern California on a day like today is going to be spectacular. But when you get to ride around on a Mission RS, well, it makes the experience just that much more special. And you'll notice I'm talking with my hands a little bit. Well, that's because I don't have a clutch. Now, you might think that sounds a little bit boring. What that does is it allows you to focus on your riding, able to line up my corners a lot better, so that the whole riding experience is just, it's kind of blissful. We finally made it back to Mission Headquarters with the man that started it all, the founder, the CEO, and the president of Mission Motorcycles, Mark Seeger. Where did this idea come from? I mean, honestly, it came from people like myself wanting something that we just couldn't buy. You know, high-end electric vehicles have been around. We wanted the same experience on our bikes, and I couldn't buy one, and my team couldn't buy one, so we decided to design and build one. I, mean, I have to say, I was skeptical going into it. I've been a biker for many, many years, so, you know, is it going to handle? How much power am I going to have? Can I do wheelies? You know, things like this. Could you, I, you know, do a wheelie? <laughs> <laughs> really good wheelies on it. But all those questions got answered today. But the RS is your top of the line model. I mean, the, the version I rode today goes for around 58,000, I believe. It does. Did you think it performed very well? I would say, yeah. Getting up to, you know, 060, 100. Uh, yeah, you could absolutely feel the power going up there, and it was comparable to pretty much anything else that I've ridden in that class on the road today. The, the BMW S1000RR, you've got Aprilia's offerings, and you go all the way up to, say, the Ducati uh, 1199R. We will take all those motorcycles head to head. A, we're not shifting. You open the throttle, you constant acceleration. Secondly, we have more torque at the low end than any bike on the market today. So when you look at our bike, is it expensive? It is. We're trying to bring the price down as quick as we can. That said, you have to way overspend that price on a comparative gas bike to come even close, and you still won't make it. All right, let's talk about numbers. Okay, so it's fully electric. This is the $60,000 Mission RS, so it's running 17 kilowatt hours. It's got about 163 horsepower, but that's at the wheel, so that's comparable to just about any other superbike on the market today, and it's making 130 pound-feet of torque. Well, electric motors have been around longer than internal combustion engines have been yeah. around. So the, the, the benefit is that when you have one part that's yep. just spinning, it's not pistons moving up and down, explosions, valves, heat, fluids, you can design that to literally never break. Yeah. And that's that's the benefit. How does that affect handling as well, without all these moving parts and inertia happening inside? Phenomenal, because what our motorcycle designers were able to do is calculate where is the best point to have the center of gravity, yeah. kind of somewhere between your knees, right? Yeah. On a normal bike, you have fuel sloshing around, you have pistons going up and down, and all this other stuff happening. You, your center of gravity is constantly shifting around, which is not very good. It, it destabilizes the vehicle. Ours literally doesn't change. Yeah. So it's the most stable vehicle you could possibly ever build. So that was the easy part. Now we have to make it go really, really far. So a lot of our work went into getting the performance right. We said, all right, we're going to maintain that performance that you just spoke about, the one that you experienced today, yep. and add to that 140 or more miles of range. So the bike I was riding today was the RS. That's We've right. got the R model sitting here behind us right now as you speak. What are the differences between the two? Two differences. Yep. They look slightly different. Mm -hmm. Slightly different industrial design, a little bit more aggressive, a lot more carbon fiber work. And then the components, which is the same brand, are just slightly down spec. But now there's going to come in three options. You've got three battery configurations. Low, medium, and high, that's right. Uh, so 12 kilowatt hour, 15 kilowatt hour, and 17 kilowatt hour. That's right. Okay, now the price points of that starting at around about 32 for the 12 kilowatt right. hour, yep. and then moving on up from there. Mm -hmm. Level two charging station, where you can probably get it down to about 47, 48 minutes is the best we've ever seen. Yep. We also designed into the batteries direct DC to DC charging that allows them to be charged in a couple of minutes. Wow, yeah, because we could have done with that today. We actually did run out of power today, and it was one of those situations where I was like, for the first time, I suffered range anxiety. I was looking at it, and because we were filming today, we were giving it a fair bit of, mm -hmm. you know, a bit of go. So we did end up actually experiencing the range anxiety that everyone talks about today. We were like, are we going to have to go home? Where do we charge it at? We found a charging station. We plugged it in Great. while we had lunch. And, you know, by the time we'd finished lunch, we had another 50%. So that was... Kind useful, of handy. Useful. useful. Yeah, yeah and, exactly. and that's the other thing. And then lastly, you talked about the head-up display and the uh, the onboard, what we call the telematics, right? Yeah. The, the dashboard. You know, that's really where, where you want to look at a vehicle and say, look, your consumer today, particularly a luxury consumer, is going to be expecting iPhone-like experiences on their TV, on their computer, on their phones. Yeah. 
why not on a $30,000 motorcycle? Because we built a completely different kind of motorcycle than has ever existed, we yeah. were forced to redesign the bike literally from the wheels on up. And so we had the capability to say, well, what is lacking in the traditional motorcycle experience? So we decided to just build this bike for this year. At the end of the day, we want to make this motorcycle as accessible as we humanly possibly can. Uh, which begs the question, when are we going to be seeing them on the street? So you're going to be seeing them on the street in the hands of customers later this summer. So we are going to be coming in at all the, the standard price points that the motorcycle market is familiar with between now and as soon as we can. Yeah, I'm glad you got to ride it. Thank you so much Appreciate for having a good time. It. Cheers. So there you have it. I've been lucky enough to spend a full day in the saddle of the Mission RS on these gorgeous Northern California roads. And I have to say that I am genuinely impressed with this bike. Not only is it just stunning to look at, but it's an exhilarating ride as well. It has heaps of power, it handles well, but as is the case with a lot of EVs, I think the battery technology has to get better and the prices still need to come down, which is something that Mission seems to be well on their way to fixing. For TransLogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. We'll catch you next time.